we often forget that the creative or the message or the copy or the audience or the you know creator is the stimulus to driving an action which then generates output and the data data is purely a consequence of actions Future North America, a retail marketing and e-commerce conference summit hybrid, is taking place this fall at Etc. Venues 360 Madison Avenue, New York City, on September 5th, 2024. If you care about the future of commerce, this is the place to be. Go to futr.today for more info. Hello and welcome to the shiny new object podcast. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative, the creative effectiveness ad tech platform. And this is a podcast about the future of data-driven marketing. And this week, I am here with John Sardekipour, who is Director of Marketing, Free People Europe. So John, for anyone who doesn't know who you are and what you do, can you give the listeners a bit of background? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's amazing to be here in Cannes. Oh, yes. Sorry. We are in Creative X's. They call it a Maison or whatever. Anyway, we're, ro- we're overlooking wherever that is in Cannes. It's a lovely sea. Le- so thank you, guys. Croisette. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible view. Uh, it's a really nice place. Um, can see this. To my How, but what was your path to get here? Uh, a night train from Paris, a uh, 12-hour train overnight um, with uh, what can only be described as a K-pop uh, girl band, uh, five other beds in this like tiny room. It was a bit surreal. Woke up uh, dreaming as well, thinking there's someone that's sitting at the end of my bed. Hopefully that was a dream. <laughs> but um, yeah, just literally uh, got off the train and, and here I am. And what was your career journey before that weird K-pop adventure? Talking, talking about journeys, yeah. Um, so, yeah, where, where should I begin? I guess um, uh, grammar school, doing uh, computer science, um, learning about like architecture and, and code and all the, all that fluffy, boring stuff. But then like learning to make websites, HTML and um, stuff like that. Um, at the time, it was all like you know Nokia, Engage, and um, you know I was into gaming, so like you know uh, WAP sites and things like that it was like you know Snake that era, and then going on uh, like coupled with economics and business, um, learning about like the tech companies, obviously the rise of, of Facebook, at, well MySpace, um, just having fun like creatively, like creating profile pages and you know. Um, you know what it what it was all about, <laughs> um, and then um, yeah, went on to Kingston Uni, um, studied uh, business information systems design. Shifted actually, I was doing computer science degree and shifted because I just wanted to get more into ecom. And the professor of ecom at the time, way ahead of his time, as uh, Jonathan Briggs, he was uh, running a, a digital agency, and they, they were like. You could count them on your hand at the time, um, doing like really cool quintessential brands. Um, Paul Smith, one of them. And I was working at the same time in a designer clothes shop uh, in Kingston, near, just outside Bentles. And uh, so, yeah, um, love of, of like fashion and, and retail and also like the digital like world was just like evolving um, as seen on screen.com had, had just come about. Um, so you had like this skinted and minted, you know, so you'd have like a super, uh, you have a David Beckham bell staff picture and then you'd have a, a, a super dry, uh, like faux leather jacket. And yeah, it was, it was interesting to me. Found my way into, um, uh, the owner of this designer clothes shops, um, like good books and he took me buying, uh, got great experience from that. And then, um, launched designer dash fashions.co.uk was selling women's handbags, um, didn't have licenses so it didn't last long but um in the end like that was that was doing quite a good trade and then i went on to join uh big light uh ux uh, marketing agency they had been working with burberry and uh fire trap jeans and ben sherman and all these like cool british uh british brands and yeah like, that's where i cut my teeth affiliate marketing paid search paid social crm um lead gen and yeah like you know um 
creative stuff like you know and, and also like daily trade so like every morning i'd be in at like half eight and i'd be into google analytics getting you know all the numbers bestsellers um sending that around and and you know it was a i still do that today even at free people my team think i'm absolutely mad because i'm like you know obsessed as soon as i wake up i'm straight into the numbers how did we do yesterday how are we trending you know what was conversion like how's aov traffic channels etc so yeah um yeah after agency i went to arcadia I was at top shop top man that was w- wicked really good fun um despite all of the nonsense in the news like fantastic business great brand great products but above all people and i think that's like one of the re- main reasons i'm here in Cannes is like there are so many different brands and businesses and retailers but like there's only a handful of like humans that actually run the business and the industry and i think that like human to human interaction and relationships is so important um yeah and then flash forward to 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 like now um married two kids um life's changed uh you know your priorities are uh, uh, are different and yeah i guess we'll, we'll come to the next question it's kind of quite uh, poignant In the last five years or so, which new belief or behavior has changed your work life? Definitely for me, mental health is, is you know, number one. Um, and, you know, family first is, is a motto I live by. Health before wealth. You know, you can be chasing your dream. Um, there's so much stuff on TikTok and, and, you know, YouTube that, like, isn't the right thing to do. But I think, like, for me, like, um it sounds cheesy but like apps like buddhify and um calm uh are, are, are excellent uh for like a morning meditation um or just just being mindful of of you know having time to reflect and and just breathe and and you know because we work in high pressure environment um we've got big goals you know big objectives got to hit your KPIs. If but, you are checking your Google Analytics um, when you wake up, yeah, you definitely need to meditate. You know? <laughs> well, I do. A, that is a terrifying combination of Well, values. it's like, I mean, my, my ritual, my routine is, yeah, look at the numbers, log them, uh, and, then, and then get straight out. Like, as soon as, like, my, my wife gets up, because um, usually I'm up early with, with the kid, with, with Zelda, um, I'll get out and i'll run um and i'll do i'll do a 5k every day um today's like an exception because i literally just got off the train um but i'll hopefully get into the sea if i can at some point Uh, but yeah running is like massive i used to cycle every day um from shoreditch to kentish town and back and then after that i was cycling from uh like shoreditch to Putney, <laughs> wow. which was brilliant, really good fun, and I got really fit actually, um, a bit fitter than I am now. But um, so yeah. you give me an insight into your world, which is it's very revealing. But um, let's get to the job. So, what is the best bit of advice that you give to your teams about data driven marketing? What is that silver bullet that you find yourself sharing most often? I think more often than not, the uh, the fact that data is and someone um, who was mentoring me um, back in the, the day told me this. So, so data is purely a consequence of actions. And so we often forget, uh, certainly not a free people, we're, we're, really, we're really like um, focused on this, but we often forget that the, the creative or the message or the copy or the audience or the you know, creator, if you're working uh, with someone on this, um, is the stimulus to driving an action which then generates output and the data. And so when we're looking at budgets, we actually, you know, and I, I myself, like I've, I've become more and more attuned to this, but like your investment isn't purely on the media or media partner. Uh, it, it's how you're going to execute the creative and how much you're going to invest in that creative i'll take i give an example um you 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 wouldn't believe kind of some of the numbers that you know models or um creators 
command for you know ad uses and rights for like global out of home or european out of home and we you know we've had to um accept that because we know like it's it can it can make or break the difference between someone seeing an ad in the real world on a billboard and being stimulated by it feeling good about it having a a, a, a really strong like emotional reaction to it and then going on to search on google you know so we could put 100 percent of our budget into pmax but unless there's something in the real world that's stimulated someone to search you know it's it's just purely like based on what you know you're not giving um you're not giving any like fuel in in the race car you know what i mean like you're not getting the nitro um all the nos shot <laughs> Jeez, a fast and furious reference old school but um yeah you know like that is like the silver bullet definitely so really keen to get a bit deeper on that because i i there's these two worlds that are colliding right so you've got I went to like a performance marketing conference a little while ago and someone stood on stage and went the most important thing or 70 or 67, 60 or 70% is down to the creative and like all these people wrote it down, you know, like, oh, mm. creative. Like, and that is a ginormous black hole that like, well, what do you mean creative? Like you can't just yeah. say the creative, like that is just ginormous. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got like the, the, the top of funnel guys who are creating stuff and then you go yeah well you've got to optimize it in for a you know performance environment and they're like a what for a what you know and there's this there's a there's a gap there yeah because all the all the uh all the ad tech guys go oh yeah creative yeah 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 creative and nodding and not really knowing what that means and equally the creative people aren't thinking about where this thing's going to end up when it comes on platform so i like the the nos or the nitro example is is nice yeah like without the thing that's going to drive emotion you're not going to get the digital action that you're after so how do you bridge that gap i think uh fantastic cmos um uh, uh, that's their 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 number one role uh, they play, you know, bridging marketing teams and and analytics teams and digital teams, ecom teams and creative teams. Um, we're we, we're blessed with a, with a really good one, um, and uh, you know, it provides that uh, connection, but also like inspiration, support, and like framework to 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 you know focus on um, best in class creative, creative testing, uh, but then also backed up by measurement and reporting and data, which is, as I say, like, that's the mantra. That's the, that's the after action, you know, that's the data. That's, that's like telling you the read if, and also like, you know, it's not hundred percent, you, you know, there are so many like measurement tools now, which, um, you know, we're still in our infancy and we've got all sorts of like, you know, privacy, uh, you know, good things obviously to protect people's privacy, but at the same time, they don't help uh, retailers or brands measure measure uh, performance as perfectly as they used to. This episode of the Shiny New Object Podcast is brought to you in partnership with Manfest. Whether it's live in London or streamed online to the global marketing community, you can always expect a distinctive and daring blend of fast-paced content, startup innovation pitches, and unconventional entertainment from Madfest events. You'll find me causing trouble on stage, recording live versions of this podcast, and sharing a beer with the nicest the most influential people in marketing. Check it out at www.madfestlondon.com. So let's say, uh, let's get on an overnight train. I don't know where I'm going with this. And go into the future, right? So what is your shiny new object? Well, I know. Why am I saying that? I never asked that question. Your shiny new object, John. It's, cool. it's 3D worlds. So I'm really surprised yeah. by that. So I want to learn. I want to get out of your head why 3D worlds is your shiny new object. Why do you think it represents the future of data-driven marketing? I mean, it, it, for me, like I, it's, imagine in 10 years' time, probably not even 10 years' time, right? Because um, even now you've got the Apple Vision Pro, right? Um, have, you, have you used it? I have not. It's insane. Like, it's as close as you can come at the moment to, like, getting into the Matrix. I mean, the Meta the meta headset is, like, 
not anyone it doesn't get near it so but still it's something like you know basically it's like the the meta headset is like a a, a, a snares and you know the apples is is you know it's like the, the 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 latest thing you can basically yeah yeah it's a shiny new object um and I've always been attracted to to shiny new objects, but yeah, basically, imagine in a, in a few years' time, or even like you know, uh, in the next couple of years, where you know you've got a device, whether or not you want to put it on your head or or, or not, like that's that's you know that's going to become. I feel like you know, kids in ten years' time, you know, ten year olds now, they're going to be twenty, and they're going to be your new like Gen Z or whatever the the letter is, like. And you combine that with insanely fast connection speeds, data, like, you know, 10, 100 times the speed of 5G, uh, 6G, and you'll be able to stream 8K, you know, maybe we'll get to 16K video. That's going to be hyper realistic, like more realistic than you and I looking at each other right now. And you can come to Cannes, uh, you can immerse yourself in, in an incredible world for perhaps mental health uh, or, you know, the, the commercial element, like uh, you see luxury brands right now are, are creating like 3D spaces like on desktop or on, I was in uh, Barcelona last week at Shop Talk and I met um, this lovely lady who'd created a 3D world for Ralph Lauren and, uh several other businesses like uh, Moncler and and I think they, they're talking about a French fashion house as well, Chanel, etc. And in fact, I went to a, a, a Spanish uh, like medical optical retailer and they had a Chanel like, it looked like a photo booth. You got in there and it was augmented reality. You could try on the latest, well, you could try on the whole collection. It was pretty cool. And then, you know, smart lead gen data capture you have to put your email address in if you want to, you know, get get the the picture mm. uh, emailed to you, and you agree, obviously, to to marketing. Um, so they're building their base off of you know real world. Anyway, come back to three D worlds, right? Three D worlds. Um, you know, as a, as a gamer, you know, from like the days of Doom or um, Quake, uh, and now it's like the the Call of Duty and the Modern Warfare, like COVID. I think I feel like every guy and a lot of girls were playing um, to escape reality. And yeah, like it is really escapism. So you can combine like incredible tech, hardware, um, fantastic like data speeds. You can immerse yourself in, in not just 3D worlds, but like interactive films or movies or like games uh, or, or just like shopping experiences. And, and you know what, like the commercial side of this is you can reach a, a, a global audience and, you know, you can, you can quite quickly using automation, um, sense checked by a human, um, you know, to translate your kind of site into a 3D world, which you could ex explore the latest collection or just have fun. I think that's missing from now. It's all very functional. So, with all of the the, the big sort of tech and out tech things that have arrived, being shiny new objects and stuck around, they've all had like a core thing that they do, right? So, like the internet, you could you sort of access the world's information, right? Mobile, you could you could make a call while being on the move. Um, yeah. um, whereas, like some things have kind of fallen over, like like voice tech. Like it has you know? I mean, I've had a Amazon Alexa or similar for ten years now, and I, mm. it hasn't evolved my use of it. And it's like, what is the one thing that I can't live without? I think it doesn't exist, right? For me, I'm sure there's lots of there's lots of uses. But and where and where I am with with three D worlds, whatever you want to call it, it's like, well, what is the what is the thing that everyone's going to do? And like the immediate one for me is gaming, but mm. I'm not. A, I'm a ca very casual, casual gamer, game. yeah. So, like, is there a is there a game that's better on a on a, a face computer, as I've heard it called, um, that is better than like a handheld experience, like on a TV? Like, it, what is the thing that everyone's going to do to make it impossible not to have a headset? Because without that, then the the marketing opportunity is is I think still slim. I think that's a really good question. Um, 
a lot of the you know companies are, are, are making it like for work uh, microsoft uh, i think have got like a they're, they're they're launching like their 3d office and like suite which you know is incredibly mundane and boring but like it could it could imagine you know the paperclip bouncing <laughs> around in, in your eye like you know the, the ai with, with with like you know imagine like incredible like um like power and speed uh, but, and, but it and calculation like it could do it could create your, your spreadsheets you know in your base uh it could, it oh, just, which, i know it sounds awful but I'm, like, I'm just saying like like what what if because that i know is the future for for those guys like that's what they're working on like and also it's like ai machine learning can actually create 3d worlds for you based on your brief pretty quickly you know versus you know, someone having to 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 you know, go back to the days of coding the C plus plus or or whatever, like HTML, or JavaScript. Um, yeah, like you you can you can just speed up uh, the processes so much so much quickly and more efficiently. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm I'm so I have this I have this theory, right? And you can laugh at me about this, right? That we've big tech has grown and grown and grown. Don't need to tell you this, you know. But it, it's kind mm. of there's this kind of like upwards trajectory of like value and growth. Of, yeah. of Google look, and Meta, right? Well, you know, look after at, twenty years, right? Look at Nvidia, right? Yeah, exactly. Re- really good, more valuable yeah. than uh, Apple now. I think yeah. something like that. Um, However, they, the pen, penetration of mobile phones and the internet in, in, in terms of the world's population is getting there. It's not there, but it's pretty much there. So at that point, the only new market every year that will become available in the world is, is, is new kids that get old enough mm. to get a mobile phone, mm-hmm. right? Which I'm not, it's, it's not an insignificant number of people, but yeah. it's not that many versus how many digital has converted in the last 20 years, right? Mm. So the, the the big growth tech companies, your Googles and your Apples, they're they're running out of customers basically. So I think what this play is, this this heads up play, the face computer thing, is like, well, we need someone else to sell them. We we need to we like like they, they need to find a way to sell this face computer, Apple Vision Pro or yeah. whatever, yeah. to the people they've already sold a mobile phone mm-hmm. to. Otherwise they can't keep their growth up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair point. Um, I think you also, I uh, heard a really good stat. Well, not good. It's awful. Uh, that was, uh, 20% of boomers. So that's, so that's slightly older people, um, shop online. I, c- I couldn't believe that stat. And that's, that's, that was from, um, uh, Epsilon, um, at, at, uh, IMRG event last, last week, 20%. So eighty percent of that. So they might have the device, but they're not using it to shop. So there's still stages in to use the the funnel. You know, still stages to to go before people like actually like. There's still massive market opportunity. Is my point. And we're talking about a shiny new object that's going to be adopted by you know early adopters naturally. You know, and and people who are more akin to like the three D worlds, like Minecraft. Um, you know, uh, I've forgotten the the, the 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 Fortnite. So that's like insanely popular. You know, Roblox, right? It's even getting even younger, right? So like eight year olds, you know, in ten years' time they're eighteen, and they are familiar and accustomed to these gaming spaces. But they're not just gaming; they're entertainment spaces. Like Travis Scott. He'll do a concert on these things. He, he did that, didn't he? That, yeah. But that was four, three years ago. And yeah, so, but it's not but a thing. Set now, the bar. So now, like, you know, that, does that got... happen all the time now? So that... and and you know what happens? Sorry, I like, should know this. They'll just like they'll just like do uh, a, they'll just like do a, a, a unplanned. It would be like bang, everyone's online. Notification. You know, it could be Taylor Swift. You know, she's she's live from somewhere and then suddenly like the whole world is watching so really you know it's a numbers game you know as as you were saying like the more and more young people that that are you know getting older um they've got incredible like powerful devices the iphone the humble iphone has become like the most powerful like handheld computer you know forget face computers for a second like you can just slip your phone into a cardboard thing 
and it becomes a, i don't know if you've used it but you, you can just like for a few pence you can put it into a cardboard thing yeah, yeah. put it on your face and like somehow the brain gets confused into thinking you've got a a, a 4k headset on it's remarkable and that's now so john we love we have we have to leave it there i feel like we're we're Three drinks in on um, and with the the can the can of loose tongues are, are wagging. Three coffees, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, where is the best place to do that, and what makes a message that you'll respond to? Uh, LinkedIn professionally. Um, you could also find me on my YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a cool project going on at the moment with an Alfa Romeo classic from 1999. Um, GTV. What's the handle? Uh, is J T one two four J A Y T W E one two four, um, and Instagram. Well, we've done two hundred fifty episodes of this podcast, um, and no one has come come back with a YouTube channel or or a vintage car YouTube channel. So, congratulations it's, it's not on enough, being, being unique. Not enough brand marketers or, or performance marketers who actually do it from the flip side to see what it's like as a content creator and and that is like again like you know talk about creative like you've got to you've got to see it from from the other side beautiful place to leave it john thank you so much thank you very much hi just before you go i'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review of the shiny new object podcast on apple podcasts or itunes whatever it's called these days or whichever podcast provider you use we're an indie podcast so it would go a long way for us if you could just share the word and give us a bit of a support on those channels that would just be fantastic if you haven't got time that's also cool and yeah if you could tell your colleagues about the podcast and also if possible, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you'd like to speak on the podcast or be a guest or you think I'm asking the wrong questions, anything, I'd be super interested to hear what you think. So please email me at tom at automatedcreative.net. That's T-O-M at, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling it. Anyway, you'll work it out. Thanks so much.